This is the fourth video in this series on the mysteries of OAuth2 and AppScript. In previous videos in this series I covered borrowing a token from AppScript using a service account and creating a self-maintaining token infrastructure for a script that's supposed to be run as the owner of that script. Probably the most common use of web apps though is to run as the user accessing the script. In this case the OAuth2 process needs to get authorization to access resources belonging to the user. This differs only very slightly from when the web app is published to run as the owner of the script. Obviously the publishing process is a little different, but also the Goa library needs to maintain a token infrastructure specific to each user running the script. In previous examples, the token infrastructure was shared by all users of the script. There are only a couple of lines of code different from the example I use for running as the owner of the script. So I'll skim over the details of setting up a project and the credentials and so on. We'll just use the same project and project credentials. So I already have credentials file available to use and as before I'll be using the CloudVision API. So the first task in a newly created project is to add the Goa library, which we do like this. I'll repeat the key at the end. And as before, we need to do a one-off setting of credentials in the, in the property store. So this is where Goa will maintain the token infrastructure. It needs to communicate with Google's authentication servers. The only change you need to make to the pattern is the file ID for the downloaded credentials, the scope needed for the APIs being used, and a name by which to refer to this package later on. So that's this file ID, this package name, and this scope. Now the properties stored to use should still be the script properties. So this is because the credential details are shared by all users, even though their individual token infrastructure is not. We'll come to where that's stored later on. So we can run this once, and then you can delete it if you want, because all the necessary information is now in the property store. And that's all the setup required, so now we can create the web app. This is the first difference from the run as me example. In order to maintain a separate token infrastructure for each user accessing the script, Goa needs to refer to the script properties for the project credentials, but to manage the details in the user property store. So the first thing in the web app should be this clone process. It will only actually do something if the script level credentials or scope have changed. But the objective is to always have an up-to-date per user credential store. After that, the web app is exactly as before, but with one exception. This time when we create the Goa object, in order to get a token from it, we use the user properties because that's where the token infrastructure specific to the user is maintained. So recap, credentials are held in the script properties, back to the one-off store. That's where we store them here. But token infrastructure is maintained in the user properties. So that means that every time from now on that we want to get a token, which is what we're going to be doing with this instance of Goa, we use the user properties. So just like before, it will run through a consent dialog if it needs to. By this time we should have a token, so we'll just check that that all worked fine. And then we kick off the web app. So this time we publish the web app as user accessing the web app, and of course we have to allow them to be able to get to it. So that might be in your domain or it might be just anyone. And now we'll test it. And this is what the consent dialog looks like. Now, if you remember, when we run it, this the first time, we have to copy this URL into the developer console because it's a new script and it needs to know about it, that it's allowed to accept requests from this address. So we do that by updating the credentials piece of the developer console for this project. And this is as always the same thing. It is possible to modify the Goa dialog if you want to have something different for users of the script rather than when you set up initially. So Goa maintains various details and can even store custom properties. So you could, for example, show when someone last used this app or some other personalization stuff like that. If you look at the details on for the website at the end of this video, you'll find out more on how to do all that. And that's really all there is to it. There's no complicated callbacks or entry point handling. Just check if consent's needed, and it'll bring up this dialog if it's necessary. And here's the result. So let's get back to the script and just look that over a little bit more. So this is where we got the token. And remember, we were using the user properties this time. And then we're calling the API. And you saw the result. Now, the image I'm analyzing is, of course, coming from my drive. 
In real life, you'll probably want to allow the user to pick a file for analysis from his own drive using the Google Picker, but that's the subject of another video for another day. You'll find a fully baked app there to do image analysis using files from a user's drive if you want to take a look at that in some more detail. As always, if you have any particular app script topic you'd like me to cover on this channel, let me know in the comments.